Dr. Jason Saunders here to continue our conversation about oxygen and how oxygen relates to COVID-19 patients. And so at this point, it's not controversial to say that, especially in these severe COVID cases, uh, patients are having an inability to uh, maintain normal levels of oxygen saturation. And there's a variety of theories to determine you know, why that is, and that's gonna be an ongoing um, search. You know, at this point in time, there have been many articles, we've talked about most of them, uh, on the different theories on why that's happening, but the fact is that's happening. And so while we do need to continue to look at the mechanism for which that, that is occurring and we need to deal with that, at the same time, we have patients with low blood oxygen who need oxygen levels to, uh, to survive. And so the ventilation system, the mechanical ventilator has been put in place in a lot of these scenarios to help these patients breathe when what it sounds like is, you know, it's not as much of a breathing issue. In other words, they're able to actually mechanically breathe, but what they're unable to do is they're unable to drive the oxygen across the uh, lung tissue or into circulation or possibly that they're getting it into circulation, but they're having trouble carrying it in the red blood cells with their hemoglobin. So again, there's a variety of mechanisms at play here. All we do know is that they do seem to respond to oxygen uh, a variety of different oxygen therapies. And so what we're trying to do is just bring to light some of these different options that are out there so that patients understand that they have, uh, you know, other alternatives to mechanical ventilation. So, um, you know, what we need is we need less invasive um, and, and more available uh, therapies for these patients to avoid intubation. Um, so one of those options is a uh, oxygen helmet or hood as what they're called. So uh, they're used in other countries, especially Italy, pretty regularly. Uh, we use them here. <clears throat> uh, we use them in our hyperbaric chamber. So you could use them in a hyperbaric chamber scenario, or you could use them um, even just with surface oxygen. And so what happens here is uh, there's an inlet and an out. So, you know, driving oxygen in one end and allowing for the exhale uh, at the other end. There's a, uh, a soft rubber gasket. And so you're actually, you trim the gasket to the size of your neck so that it's not very tight, yet it still maintains a, an airtight seal. So that would be stretched and placed over the patient's head. And then the helmet goes on top of that and would be filled with oxygen. And uh, as a result of filling that with oxygen, you could create a 100% oxygen environment without putting undue pressure uh, on, the, on the breathing system. And so that hood could also be pressurized a little bit, but what that's doing is it's creating a very, very high oxygen rich environment without the uh, pressure, the lung pressure of the mechanical ventilation and certainly without the need for intubating patients. So uh, independent from COVID-19, uh, there've been multiple studies done, which obviously will uh, include the links below this. Uh, there've been multiple studies uh, looking at hood systems and the, the difference between a hood system and a mask or a hood system and a nasal cannula system on high flow. And so these hood systems seem to be a very powerful way to deliver uh, a very high level of oxygen but be very non-invasive and, and very effective all at the same time. And so there were two studies done out of uh, University of Chicago Medicine, uh, one in 2016, one in 2018. Uh, both studies showed that patients getting the hood oxygen system responded better than those patients getting um, masks and that uh, they were actually able to reduce the uh, length of the ARDS, they were studying ARDS at the time. So the, the length of time of the actual ARDS, uh, they were able to improve uh, the likelihood of not needing to be put on a mechanical ventilator uh, and they were improved uh, survival rates a great deal. And so uh, we will include those two studies. Dr. John Kress, uh, who is uh, chief author on both of those studies uh, and also a professor at University of Chicago Medicine, um, he he led the way to try to see if you know these hood systems were at least as good, if not better, than uh, one masks and nasal cannulas, and two, um, if by doing so you could delay or potentially not need mechanical ventilation at all. And so again, if we could provide these patients with the oxygen that their body desperately requires and be non-invasive 
and more effective, it's a win-win for everybody. So I hope that helps. Take a look below. We'll have a few videos uh, linking to the hood systems as well as uh, links to the articles that I was referring to. Take care.